Losing fish entails something unfortunate happening between shot and plate. I am here to help you reduce losses and maximize success. Our focus is the New Zealand yellowtail kingfish. They can be challenging, battles often ending in fish wounded or eaten by sharks. I am passionate about helping people improve their diving, reducing mother nature's suffering as a result. This video series is made to serve you. In our first episode, we will cover the importance of removing fish from the water and why you should always have a plan to deal with your catch. No! No! See you, sir. Kingfish is a delicacy, not just for humans. Such large, tasty fish can attract some unwanted attention. To swim around with a kingfish in certain areas guarantees you a run-in with the toothy locals. Getting your fish out of the water puts you out of harm's way. Before shooting a kingfish, it's worth considering what you're going to do with it. Whether it's getting it to shore, getting it to a boat, or getting it into your float boat. The ideal circumstances are to be diving up current from your extraction point, making the swim back easier and leaving less of a blood trail. The boat is anchored in the most sheltered part of the bay, but that puts it up current from the area I really want to be diving. At the furthest point in my dive and down current from my extraction point, I scan through a school of Pororo. Not seeing what I was hoping to find, I begin an ascent to the surface. Still well within the comfort of my breath hold, I level out when I notice these kingfish take interest. I was very keen to get a shot at one, but it's important not to convey this to the fish. If you rush straight away, they might go forever, but if you can be calm and collected, you might get a great opportunity. The current is trying to push us out into the open ocean and away from the boat. The shot is looking good so far meaning I can be quite forceful with the fish, leading it up current, back towards the rocks. In an instance where you had a bad shot, you could be picking between losing your fish and losing to the current. Looking out across the surface, I weigh up my options in terms of getting this fish out the water. The fight is going well so far. I know that if I can keep this up, the fish will tire out eventually. In the meanwhile, I'm going to try to bring it to a more manageable area, while keeping it on a very short leash. On this dive, I'm using the Wetty Mini Float Boat, which for most of the diving I do is perfectly adequate. But when you're shooting reasonable kingfish, it does leave a little to be desired. At this distance from the boat and being down current, I do not rate my odds of being able to get the fish there in one piece. Yo! I call out to my dad who was on the boat. In hindsight, it's probably something I should have done almost immediately after shooting the fish. When you shoot a kingfish, you often know that sooner or later something is going to turn up and try and eat it. So you're inclined to try and finish the fight early. This is not always the best idea, as you can try and take on the fish when it's too green. This can often be the most touchy part of the operation, and once there's no longer pressure on your shaft, it has a tendency to move around. I got too eager, and now the shaft is partially falling through the fish. It's barely hanging on, I have to grab onto it again, but this time I cannot let it go, otherwise I'm probably going to lose it. Once I get the kingfish between my legs, I grab its gills with my left hand, and reach for my knife with my right, pulling it out, and sealing the deal. Well not really, because the fish isn't landed until it's in the boat. Now that the kingfish is dispatched, my top priority is to get it out of the water, but that is easier said than done. My options are limited, my float boat is too small and the longer I linger, the more likely I am to make a new friend. Having planned this out more beforehand, I could have avoided getting into such a situation. Perhaps if I had brought something to make noise, like a whistle, I could have more effectively made contact with the boat, instead of hoping that a couple of waves and calling out once would suffice, which it did not. No! No! I call out again and am noticed at last through no fault of my dad. The fish, and to an extent my own safety, was put on the line due to poor planning. While the king did make it to the boat, there are times where you will not be blessed with the time to bob around. Yeah, because I think I saw you standing, so I was like, oh, he's seen me. So I like kind of chilled out for a bit again. Oh, I was stoked. Yeah, a couple. We can consider it a win, but we want to aim for those flawless victories, and this wasn't it. But every mistake offers the chance to reflect and learn something ideally. What can we learn from this experience? Plan it out more, have a clear path for your extraction. Because if you don't plan it out, the next time you shoot a kingfish, 
this might be what you see. I would love to show you footage of a shark eating a kingfish, but this one survived and I've never lost one to a shark. This trevally here being the only fish I've ever really lost, besides a few butterfish off floats when I first started out. The next video in this series we're going to be talking about why shot placement is a quintessential ingredient in successfully landing kingfish. If you want a funny analogy, shot placement is the salt, plan is the pepper. But until then, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'll respond to them there, or potentially even in the end of the next video. Thank you very much for watching.